Yes, uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, and I guess it uh, fits now nicely because we already heard <laughs> just the discussion something about probabilistic argumentation. Um, but so much I can say, um, this is now not about the constellations approach, um, but we will see. So basically there is some search in um, probabilistic argumentation or like extending the classical abstract argumentation also to probabilistic setting in the recent years. And um, now we look into um, how, again, the classic notion of admissibility can be um, yeah, properly reflected in this scenario. So as an um, example, maybe also a bit of motivation why one might consider um, probabilistic argumentation. Um, we have a look here at some semi-autonomous vehicle, which is equipped here with a number of sensors, have a left camera, right camera, and like a long distance LiDAR sensor. Um, and with these sensors, they detect if there's an obstacle on the left, the right, or in the middle. Um, and then of course we want to decide at whether we should like continue or stop. And now, um, so we construct some argumentation framework from, from this information. I mean, there are any number of approaches to, to extract and um, uh, yeah, build argumentation frameworks. So here, um, basically, we have an argument, argument for continue, one for stop. So there's an attack here. Um, we have arguments here for the sensors, the LiDAR, the camera right, the camera left. And like this argument somehow says uh, we do detect this obstacle in front. Um, and there's also like a negated version, which then says, uh, no, we do not detect an, um, an obstacle. Um, and maybe very briefly here, an argument like this uh, just says that like, if the LiDAR detects something, then this is like reasons to believe that there's an object in the middle. And like, if there's an object in the middle, then we should not continue to get an attack here. So, so far, this is now only a um, regular um, argumentation framework. Um, but of course, as soon as we are now here in some kind of uh, real world scenario, we have sensors, um, there could be all kinds of uncertainty which arise. So like the sensor um, values could not be um, yes or no, but maybe in some range or could be equipped with some certainty, or maybe we even have some um, statistical information on uh, false positives or false negatives by these sensors. Um, but like even in the, here the, um, sensor layout and overlapping sensor areas, we may get some quantitative information um, about these values. So, and these are then kinds of uh, a kind of scenario which where classic argumentations, the argumentation no longer suffices. And we then look into probabilistic argumentation. Um, so a very quick background, I guess you're all familiar with um, classical abstract argumentation. Uh, we consider semantics and a semantics just tells us which sets of arguments from a given argumentation framework we can um, reasonably accept together. Um, and of course, there are all, all kinds of properties such sets should have. Uh, most importantly, we usually only consider conflict free sets. So for two arguments A and B in the set, there should not be an attack between them. And then um, where admissibility is based on is the notion of defense. So here argument C is defended if the attackers here B1 and B2 are in turn um, attacked. So like here A1 or A2 need also to be in the set and A3 needs to be in the set. So we denote by here defend S like all the arguments that are defended by uh, the arguments in the set. And then, um, as you may know, admissibility is just um, uh, exactly those sets that are conflict free and that defend all the arguments inside uh, the set. So pretty much it's a self defending set, if you will. And then if you go one step further, um, you say the set is complete if it's also all arguments that are defined are actually inside the set. So now the question is, um, what exactly is, uh, what kind of probabilistic argumentation um, are we looking um, at? And how do we lift these concepts there? So we consider probability distributions, um, like here mu, over all possible argument sets. 
So here for this very small argumentation framework with just two nodes A and B and one attack, we get here these four um, possible argument sets. We can also denote these sets here by uh, Boolean formulas. And then um, a distribution assigns a probability value to each of those. And of course, the sum of those uh, needs to sum up to one such that it is a probability distribution. And then argumentation semantics in the probabilistic world um, just uh, answer the question, which distributions mu are now acceptable given an argumentation framework? And like the notion of conflict freeness, which we saw before, okay, we can just lift it here into the probabilistic setting and uh, we call it almost surely conflict free. And we require here that um, if there's an attack from A to B, then the probability of both A and B holding at the same time needs to be zero. Um, so like the distribution we has, have here is um, almost surely conflict free. Now we want to look how we can um, reflect admissibility in this context. So how do we get to this um, notion of um, like self-defense? Um, the first option is to yeah just consider what does it mean for a distribution what um, are like the arguments um, induced by this indu um, this distribution and one possibility is to just then define here an argument set induced by distribution um, as all the arguments that hold with a marginal probability of one and in the same vein we can also um, defend uh, define a notion of defense so then we call it almost surely defense. Um, and basically what we get here is um, we say that the distribution now almost surely defends an argument C if all the um, events where um, the C is defended, um, all these argument sets together um, hold with probability one. And with these, Two definitions we can then formulate like a very, very simple um, definition here of admissibility. We call this um, weakly admissible. So we just say that here the arguments that are induced by the distribution need also um, be almost surely defended by the distribution. Um, why is it called weakly admissible? That's because um, basically we only talk about uh, we only do uh, add constraints here for arguments that hold with probability one. So if under a distribution, no argument um, holds with probability one, then it's trivially weakly admissible. Um, so this is certainly something we want to have, but maybe we want to have even uh, some more strict notions. So uh, in the end, we will have four, so there are three more. Um, like the second idea is to um, uh, use a bound on the probability. So basically we want to bound the probability here of an argument C by the probability that the argument is defended. Um, so for min admissibility, we consider the attackers of an argument individually. And like for each of those, um, here we look at the probability that the argument um, is attacked here by looking at the probability that at least one of the attackers holds. And then the minimum for overall the attackers here um, is used as the upper bound. And this is already um, stricter than weak admissibility, but also implies weak admissibility. Then slightly related, um, but even a bit more strict is then joint attack admissibility. So like this is what you saw before. This is just uh, describes all the argument sets under which C is attacked. And here then we require that the probability um, that uh, of these argument sets under which C is defended um, acts as an upper bound for the probability of C. And then again, this is uh, a bit stricter than min admissibility, but implies it. There is uh, a fourth notion, um, which maybe looks a bit strange at first glance. We call it probabilistically admissible. 
Um, but basically what we do here is uh, switch the focus um, because before we looked here at like an argument C and then it needs to be defended. Um, now we look basically at here an attacker. We look at one of those Bs and um, then what we're saying is that the probability here of arguments that are attacked here by such an B um, needs to be bounded by the probability that here B itself is um, attacked. And again, this captures this um, yeah, notion of admissibility um, in the non-probabilistic setting where, of course, any argument um, attacking some other argument in an admissible extension also needs to be attacked by the admissible extension. So um, this version is also stricter than min admissibility, uh, but incomparable here to joint admissibility. So you already saw here like this, um, the comparison here, we took this um, a step further and uh, compared. So at, first of all, we introduced um, also corresponding notions of completeness. Um, and of course, then like each joint complete distribution is also joint admissible and so on. Uh, and we also looked into the context of um, existing work on probabilistic argumentation. So one thing here is um, in a paper by Tim Baroni, Giacomin and Wiese from 2017, they considered um, like element-wise lifting of classical semantics. Um, so basically this says that only um, the arguments, uh, argument sets that are classically um, admissible are allowed to be assigned to some probability. Then we also get here a notion of admissibility and completeness, which is then um, stricter than the notions um, looked into um, by us. And there is also um, a number of probabilistic semantics by Hunter and Tim from 2017. Um, and there the focus was more on the um, on marginal probabilities of arguments. So it did not look into um, like the, these Boolean combinations of um, of arguments. And uh, generally those are a bit uh, less strict than, than our notions. And there are some trivial um, semantics to round up the picture. Okay, there's one more thing uh, which we also um, provide, namely a proof of concept implementation. So we have developed a tool called- You do not have C so much time left. If you want to allow questions, you should finish soon. Yeah, I'm almost done, <clears throat> thanks. So it's a, a, a tool which basically allows you to play around with all these semantics, also the other semantics which you saw. Uh, you can find satisfying distributions for one or multiple semantics, or also maximize or minimize probabilities of arguments. And you can um, yeah, like specify, for example, context-specific constraints, which brings us back to the example from the beginning. So for example, we can add here something like a false positive detection by uh, yeah, requiring here some conditional probability constraints, which is then also enforced along with the constraints by the semantics. So in summary, uh, I showed you here some not completely trivial example um, to motivate also the probabilistic aspects of argumentation. I showed you four different uh, well, but related notions of how to capture admissibility um, in the probabilistic setting. Uh, we provide here some overview and there's of course this uh, now a tool which is also helpful just to get the feeling for the different semantics and um, yeah play a bit around with this so thank you for your attention and uh, i'm happy to answer my short question now if you have the time or then welcome you in the poster session 